It is one of America's most popular endurance challenges. Each year, more than 3 million people visit part of the Appalachian Trail. But only a fraction, about 3,000 people, complete the entire 2,200-mile mountainous trek. Janet Chamlin has the story of how a mother and daughter were inspired to conquer that route. Good morning! It's day 17! <laughs> when Greta Otten's travel partner backed out of hiking the Appalachian Trail, her 66-year-old mother, Susan, stepped in. The momness in her kicked in, and she didn't want me to be alone, and she was a little bit scared. When you volunteered to go along with your daughter, did you have any idea everything that was involved? No, totally clueless. I just like, I know where Maine is, and I know where Georgia is, and I knew it was a long way, but I had no idea it was like climbing up and down mountains the whole way. Was it ever this cold on the trail? <laughs> yes, actually. Yeah. Both women are active, having run marathons and other races, but they say nothing prepares you for the Appalachian Trail. You have to develop your trail legs. You can train all you want before you get on trail, but you're mm -hmm. not really training your body like you do need to use your body on trail. Good morning. It's day 122. For five months, through 14 states, almost 2,200 miles. When she suggested, hey, I'll do it with you, mm -hmm. any trepidation <laughs> on you? Oh, yes, 100%. <laughs> she has got to be the most accident-prone person <laughs> on this planet, so I was worried for her safety. Oh, we made it to no, the no, ER. No. And there were mishaps. Yeah. Mom fell and hit her head again. Second fall, what were your injuries? I got 10 staples across the top of my head. And I mean, stitches you're kind of used to, but staples, you know, t -t 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 that was weird. So that was in Roxylvania. So Roxylvania is what they call the state of Pennsylvania because <laughs> there is a very significant portion of the trail that is made up of rocks. But the team, Go resilient. Go mama. The thought of giving up never entered my head. The trip had a greater purpose fundraising for Parkinson's in honor of Greta's father and Susan's husband, Ron, who has the disease. I think part of it that really helped with that was the bigger goal, you know, finish the trail, raise money for Parkinson's research. So without those kind of, it would have been pretty easy to, to give up and go home. They've raised $80,000, but as meaningful was what others did for them. What did you take away from this? Just the kindness that is alive in humanity. People are so kind, mm -hmm. and we stayed in the homes of 25 different people who we had not met before doing the trail. Yeah. In our world, we just hear so much about the negativity or the bad things that are going yeah. on, and the trail really opened our eyes to the goodness that is alive. And we've heard the phrase, if you want to restore your faith in humanity, <laughs> go hike the Appalachian Trail, because yeah. boy, oh boy, boy, is that true. Yeah. It's such a great experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, we feel so blessed to have had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the joy of this reunion at Trails End. <laughs> the man in their heart, every step of the way. For CBS Saturday Morning, Janet Shemlian, Minneapolis. That was so special. I love every oh. bit of their story. And they, what they learned. And they stayed in 25 different people's homes. I know. Who didn't even know them. Know them. Have you ever backpacked over a period of time with people? It's, no. it's that kind of, you meet people and that restorative sense of humanity comes back to Bonding. you. Bonding. Yeah. They just do. You and I both had the both, $80,000, that's a lot of money. That is they a lot of money. They raised a lot of money. Too. You're here. Wow. Good for them.